Talk Shoe. Recorded live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Genesis Science Fiction Radio Show, a uh, service of the BlackScienceFictionSociety.com website. This is the last day of February 2014. Uh, my name is William Hayashi. I'll be the host. And today's uh, special guest, well, actually tonight, is Christian Hall. He's a, uh, a resident of, uh, I guess, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Are you there now, Christian? Yes, I am. And uh, Christian has been probably a comic book producer as far back as he was able to pick up something to draw with. Would that be an accurate statement? Yes, sir. Yes, it would be. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, and uh, it's a dream. So far, it's a dream come true. And and things are, are, are working out pretty well for you, obviously, because you're on the show. But, I mean, it. You, it mentions in your bio that you grew up in Pittsburgh. Um, have you been there all your life? Did you go someplace for school? Um, how did that work out? No, I've been here all my life in Pittsburgh, uh, born and raised. Um, just uh, working on uh, comic book stuff since about probably 10 or 13. And just been uh, – well, one thing is I'm not an artist. All I do is write and uh, create this stuff. And I paid mm-hmm. the uh, artist to go ahead and uh, draw it up for me. That's pretty cool. But, I mean, it mentions that you, you started drawing when you were very, very young, right? Right. Yes, I did. I did a lot of uh, stick figure comic books and stuff like that. I let my brothers and sisters and them read it and stuff. So I, I did start at a, a very young age. And and these are like full-on stories and everything? Yeah, for all stories. Uh, back then, I think I was doing 70, 80 pages to complete a book and stuff like that. But uh, just God. all stick figures and everything. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty ambitious, man. I mean, and and also highly creative. Um, I'm I'm guessing that you had very very good support from your family, your friends, and stuff like that for you to not only start it but to continue it and, and to to go to such lengths with it. Yes, yeah, yeah um, very supportive family. Uh, my mother uh, entertained me and kept uh, kept pressing me to do what I wanted to do with it. And my brothers and sisters are probably one of my biggest fans, and they help you know uh, encourage me with the stuff as they you know enjoyed it. So I continued to try to create things. So. That's pretty cool. And so at that age, what were your stories about? Um, I had a, a a whole police force. It was like the Star Girls. Uh, they were a police force uh, stopping uh, different villains in space and stuff like that. So I had about three or four uh, little issues of that. <laughs> so sci-fi at a really young age. Yes. Yes, indeed. And all I did was use uh, color pencils. and <laughs> It's kind of funny, but it was... Uh, it was kind of great. And and so about well, how old were you? I mean, when you when you first started doing these long book, comic books that you were doing. I want to say about uh, probably about uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen around there. And um, as I got a little older, I started drawing other things and stuff like that, trying at least to draw stuff and create stuff, uh, all different sorts of things, and um, finally started around, um, I guess around 18, um, really coming up with something solid that I was going to really work on. And and so were you getting, I mean, you, you already mentioned that you had encouragement from at home. Um, did that carry over into school? Did your teachers know that this is what you were interested in? No, uh, the one thing I think my teachers noticed is that um, I wasn't really, uh, I was in my own world, drawing, playing around with uh, little pen, pen caps and stuff. So I was in certain classes, uh, in my own world, making my own universe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and so did trouble ensue? Uh, of course. And, uh, you know, I've <laughs> been reporting to my mother that I'm uh out somewhere else playing around, uh, never paying attention. So, <clears throat> <laughs> yes, it, it troubled the agency. 
<laughs> yeah, if, if if I had a nickel for every letter from the school that start out start out, dear Mrs. Hayashi, William is having trouble concentrating <laughs> in school. Y'all never would have met me because I would have had a lot of money, a lot of money. But right. I mean, I mean, what about when you got into high school? I mean, did you take art classes? I mean, was there anything that you did in your schooling to kind of help facilitate doing the creative stuff that you were doing? Um, I did try to take art classes. I, I don't think I was patient enough to learn how to draw. So, uh-huh. um, and it did, it wasn't the art classes weren't what I thought they would be. Well, um, you know, they teach you how to draw other stuff. I wanted to learn how to draw Marvel or DC type stuff, and um, I, I like I said, I don't think I was patient enough to learn. So, um, it was more of a secret of uh, what I was uh, doing, you know, because. Around that time, comic book stuff is not as big as it is now. So, I mean, like, if you were into that stuff, you were kind of nerdy and not a, not a part of the uh, the cool group. Yeah, and for anybody who wants to take a look at your work online, uh, probably the best place they could find it would be at www.secondcomingcomics, and that's 2ND for second, and comics with an X, dot net. Is that probably the best place to see your art? Yes, that's a, that is my website. Um, that's where you can see some of the art, the earlier art and everything. Um, yes, that's where you can see my stuff. And and are your comics available mostly in print, online, both? Um, how do, how do people get hold of your work? Um, it, it, the only thing I have right now, I'm working on a digital uh, comic and trying to get it to where uh, you can get it uh a digital format. But the only thing uh-huh. right now is uh, to go ahead and order the paperback, and we send it back. We send it to your house. Well, that's that's not bad. I mean, you know, you get you get you pay your money, you get your fulfillment there. Um, so, how? Let's talk a little bit about making the transition from doing art in school into getting to the point where you were putting out your own works, let's say commercially. Um, how, how did that all happen? I mean, you, you mentioned you were drawing all through elementary school and, and high school. Um, in high school, probably not so much uh, learning the craft of artistry or, or, or drawing. Um, what, what happened, you know, when you got, once you got out of high school? Um, once I got out of high school, um, uh, pretty much was working for a few years. And then finally, uh, my mother and aunt of mine came up with the idea of me uh, working with uh, one of my cousins that's an artist. Her name is Danielle Robson. And then we went ahead, and I was up there pretty much all the time. Once she started to draw some of the characters and I started seeing them, I was uh, coming up there all the time. So we do nothing but characters all the time. And as, as it started to create itself, I started to write stories of what I wanted to um, uh, certain characters to be and how I wanted them to be and, and how I wanted this universe to start. So um, me and her collaborated on a lot of stuff and started working on uh, pretty much most of the characters for the universe. And, and like what year did you start doing this when you were at that point? I started uh, in 1993. Most okay. of the work is copywritten from then. Um that's when we uh, started, and once you do the first character, I was pretty much drawn in to uh, what I wanted to do. And Okay, so in 1993, you start doing the actual physical comic book. Um, what, I mean, what kind of reception did you get? I mean, we're talking about a, a complete work, correct? A complete comic book? No, no comic book, but more or less uh, a lot of the characters that are will be featured in in in, in this universe, in the Second Coming Comics universe. Okay. Um, so, all right. So, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Explain. No, you know how how did you get how did you get you know kind of your your works out into public? Um, that that's that came a little later in uh around uh, in the two thousand four or five, going to the Pittsburgh Comic Con and showing off some of the uh, uh, the work that we had worked on and um, tried to find an artist for the book. 
to go ahead mm-hmm. and uh, get a book drawn up. So uh, me and my cousin, we kind of parted ways in the sense of, like, what we were going to do. She started working, and I was uh, working and stuff. So once I ran out, I, I found somebody finally to draw the first three books, which was um, at the Pittsburgh Comic Con. Um, that's when, uh, when, when he first drew the first page and he showed it to me, I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. This is, this is it. And, and, okay, so you, you see that this is what it is. And so how long after that, before you started getting the work out? Um, uh, after he when was, was your, with, when was your, yeah, like when was your first comic done? Uh, 2000, 2000 and, um, I think it was 2000, 2008, 2008 okay. was the first book. And um, yeah, go ahead. After, uh, I went ahead to, after he was done, got him printed out. Um, of course, family, family and friends, I want to tell you your work is great. Uh, you know, they all had the book, um, went to the Pittsburgh Comic Con, uh, started, Selling a few there. Um, mm-hmm. so Facebook, um, started Facebook and trying to, uh, you know, go ahead and um, to get it out there to get the word out about it. Uh, and uh, that's uh, pretty much how the how it all started and where people started to read the book. And I've heard I had good reception about it. At least the first uh-huh. one, with, and with uh, two more because the. Uh, the first book is in three parts, so um, I still had two more books to get drawn up at the time, but I was starting to get excited about how people felt about it. Yeah, and what was the what was the reception of um, from of, you know to your work? So far, everything has been pretty positive about it. Um, even from the start, uh, people enjoyed it, wanted to see more. Um, came out with the next two issues. Uh, so far, everybody that's read the first three uh, books, I've had very positive feedback about it. So, um, working on book four, that will be due. Uh, that's coming out later on this year. So, um, just progressing forward to try and continue an ongoing series, maybe one a year for at this moment. Mhm. And and are are they still kind of carrying the themes that you know you started out with, kind of a science fiction theme? Tell us a little bit about the stories. Um, the the first story is uh, pretty much um, uh, it's about a, a creature that uh, pretty much was born at the born around ancient times. Nobody knows where he came from or where uh, how he was created. And uh, he's been like a thorn in a certain, uh, like a, they're called the enforce race. So uh, they're like human people. They have a different special uh, type of blood that uh, gives them uh, creative powers, different all sorts of different type of powers. Mm-hmm. Um, you can still be even having been born with the blood, but you you know you, you, not everybody gets the power. But this is race of people. This is the only thing this. Uh, this beast, this creature, uh, comes in contact with and uh, is kind of wiping out the race. So uh, they have their own government, uh, the present time now, they have their own government and everything, and uh, people are missing, and, they, uh, you know, the people want answers. They're asking their government, what can you do to, we want to know what's going on. So they uh, they put all the, uh, uh, their, you know, they go full all out on on the creature. His name is Devour. They go after him, and it's like a, a war. And the first three books of um, trying to take out what they feel is the reason of why people are missing and what's going on with uh, their, their problems today. So for the first three issues are all about this big war of trying to uh, take out Devour. Okay. So... How did you come up with this this creative universe that you you put together? Mm, um, uh, just I guess uh, one character at a time, uh, figuring out what I wanted to do with each character, attaching stories together, uh, trying to be different from 
uh, you know, other comic books and trying to create something that hopefully, would, you know, people will receive and enjoy. Sure. So it's been more or less like a, just trying to create something diverse, different, and hopefully people would like it. Yeah, but, you know, when when people put together an entire universe like that, um, I'm always curious to find out what it was that inspired them to to choose the kind of um, almost like the, the, the physics of it, the, 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 the world building of that kind of, you know, that kind of uh, construct. Um, you, you do it from a character-driven perspective. You look at your characters and, and then see how they're going to fit together. Or, or do you even have, I mean, do you have the whole kind of universe mapped out and then you kind of know what the, how the characters are going to be fitting into the universe and what they're going to be doing. Um, which, which do you take from the small and go to the big, or do you take from the big and then create the small? I go from the uh, um, the small and create from the, and go to the big. Was more mm-hmm. or less mm-hmm. what you were basically saying um, about how creating characters. Uh, Finding out where they're going to take place in the story, uh, and pretty much like that. Where I'm inspired from, I'm, I'm a big animation fan, so more or less, um, a lot of the stuff that I watched in the '80s and um, early '90s were inspiring to go ahead and try to create my own universe. Um, and uh, cartoons like Under the Barbarian. Um, um, Galaxy Rangers, He Man, GI Joe, all that stuff. I'm big in the animation. So once you know, getting into that and everything, uh, pretty much my mind after watching that type of cartoon and stuff, I'm always was picking up something and trying to draw something in comparison to it, or trying to create something in the sense of like you know, making my own thing up. Okay, well, I mean, so, I mean, the the process of creation, I mean, you know, when, like when I write a book, you know, I, I sort of kind of know where the ending is going to be, what the arc is going to be, and things like that. Um, do you do you have, uh, you know, a fine touch on uh, the fine-tuning of creating a story like that? I mean, is it is it, when you start out, do you eventually know where you're going to end up or or do sometimes things jump out and 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 work in a way that you didn't expect it because you're not so closed into the construct that you you've put together yes just just like that uh um I, go ahead and create a story um i know where it's going to turn out more or less well uh, um creating so uh, still still working on different uh Characters and stuff like that. So when we, when uh, new characters are created, it kind of evolves the story and makes it mm-hmm. uh, um, it broadens it out. Change might might even tweak it or change what I was going to do with it. Um, so <clears throat> I keep right now at this moment. I have a solid background of what I want to do. I do mm-hmm. a little tweaking here and there from you know, different characters that I might want to implement and at any time. <clears throat> and well, I mean that that kind of goes along with with the creation of a story. Um you know, as you go along, I would imagine, I mean, if here's something that just happened to me. I I'm trying to finish up a book. I didn't like the way the ending was going and I threw away three chapters. I mean, I've never done that. I mean, it scared the hell out of me to do it. Mm-hmm. But but in the process, I realized, well, this is not working out, so there had to be some tweaking. It, that's the kind of thing you're talking about, right? As you go along, you you think to yourself, "Oh, I could probably tighten this up. This could work out better. This makes it a stronger story." That sort of thing, right? Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for strength in story. Um, like my, um, uh, I know I'm an action type guy. I like I like uh, comic books that have a lot of action. I'm I'm, I'm a throwback in the sense of like what the '80 comic books had more or less a lot of fighting um, and stuff like that. So I want to have action in my comic book. 
but more or less mm-hmm. uh, right now, uh, a, a, a nice story can, with that, but I think adds another dimension to it. Um, sure, sure. With, uh, the, the thing that I always uh, kind of throw back is, I don't know if anybody was the, the, into the animated Justice League uh, Justice League com- uh, cartoon series that turned into Justice League Unlimited. And I felt like really honestly their writing for that was amazing. So mm-hmm. more that kind of um, made me want to become a better writer in the sense of like try and grab people, throw some twists and turns in there, try to try to become a great writer just in the sense of what I had seen. So um, that's what I'm trying to do is, add, you know, have an action pack on book with a great story and great stories to it. Well, I mean, let's be honest. If you don't have a great story, you're wasting your time and everybody else's because, you know, we've seen so many comics that have great visuals, you know, outstanding artists, but, but if the story doesn't, you know, hold on to you if the story is not that interesting. Um, it, it, there's no sustainability there. So I mean, obviously, it, it's a good thing that you concentrate on on your story first because that's the thing that's going to that's that's really where the rubber hits the road. Um, right. Now, do you do you write? Are, are you a singular writer, or do you get? you know, some some input from maybe the people who help you do the art or anything like that. Where are you now in the process? I mean, are are you a one stop shop? Did you did you figure out the right you know, the, the, the drawing part or you know, what's what's your process? Right now I'm uh with the writing, um one just 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 me at the moment. I uh-huh. have uh I do have people that are interested and I do have a team that is uh that I have lined up. Um, I, I know where the story and where I want to go with the story, at least until a point. And I always feel like to have um, a writing team, which will, I will um, finally uh, join up with them. Uh, we'll bounce each other, you know, bounce ideas off of one another, maybe even make the story even better. But right now, mm-hmm. at this moment, I'm, I'm by myself in the sense of where I want the story to go and how I have a path that laid out and that's what I want to stick with at the moment so do you have I mean you talk about you've got kind of like a story arc already planned out um, how how long you know let's just talk in months maybe how, how how long do you think your story can be drawn out before you have to you know you have to put some into well I don't want to say until it's done because if you're a good writer you can keep creating new subplots, new arcs, and things like that as you go along. Do you see your project as continuous like that, or do you think things will come to an end? You'll start off with something new after that. Um, what What are you looking at, kind of long term? Um, long term, uh, at this moment, uh, continue with. Uh, this will be an ongoing, keep going and keep going. Um, until I, I guess until you feel like uh, that you kind of ran your course with this, and then um, I do have like uh, an idea of maybe a next generation or something like that. Um, uh-huh. that more, more or less, I'm, a, I'm a, I, right now. I would like to run a path into it. It runs itself until I'm tired of doing it or trying to change it up with new characters or something like that. Okay, so at Second Coming Comics, you know. Uh, I pulled up your website here. Man, this is, I think this is the biggest website I've ever seen in terms of how big the pictures are. But, um, you know, it, your your artwork is stellar. And if you if you put, uh, I, I haven't read your work, but if you put that much time and effort into your stories, it seems like you have a pretty rich universe in which to call upon. Um, if you're, if you're going to take this out for quite some time, I... You have to have great subplots. I mean, how many? Let's let's ask some some nuts and bolts questions. How many main characters? You know, who your central characters? How many of those do you have um, that are going to be carrying on the the arc of your story? Uh, at the moment, I have eleven, and that's the the eleven members of uh, the group Vision, and that's what the comic book is called. Um, yeah. 
that right now they go ahead and they they go carry out the you know most of the story. Uh, I have other things in the works of adding more various characters, some that are um, uh, single, you know, uh, in the, by themselves. Um, maybe missions uh, going in and intertwining with each other. And then I have uh, other groups, superhero groups, that will um, actually come about and help the Asian evasion team. And maybe if all if all turns out right, I can go ahead and start different titles and stuff like that with uh, different characters and different books. And and so, I mean, this is – this is kind of like a, a big story construction. I mean, when you look at um, when you look at like the most successful comics out there, the most successful television shows, even or cartoons, they they work with larger ensemble casts so that they can rotate in um, different characters for different subplots. I mean, it, it looks like you've got very very solid construction of of your universe. Um, and knowing that you you choose your characters and create your characters based upon how you want them to fit into the overall overall uh now why is somebody picking their nose on your site um anyway uh i'm i'm looking at at some some somebody's got their never mind um but it, <laughs> uh yeah I, I, I sorry i got distracted i mean you know it's not often you see that on a website um but when when you put together this entire creative universe, you've got all of these characters in there. You you bring them in as you think of them fitting in. Um, are you, you know, you said you're doing this singularly, but are you open to the idea later on of people maybe collaborating with you and also bringing maybe a little bit of new blood to the table? Um, I, I, it's tough, I, isn't it? Yeah, it is tough. Um, my brother is actually one of the writers that wants to, that I want like to work with, and he said I'm very difficult in um, in the sense of like when people have ideas and okay. kind of listening to their ideas and something I would have to work on. So I I, I would say I'm gonna try to be open to new blood uh, coming in and stuff like that. Uh, well, uh, hopefully should, one day. I mean- yeah, they shouldn't really blame you. I mean, don't take that too hard. When when you have your own construct like that, when you've created your own universe like that, and and you've got your own vision, it's time to just let uh, let things just go like that. You know, um, mm-hmm. you you I know you want to maintain quality control, and um, I mean your your brother's going to know you better than maybe somebody else who wants to work with you. But your brother, you know, if your brother says, "Well, you can be a little prickly," I suppose you got to take. I, I suppose you got to take that to heart. But then the other part is, since it's kind of early in its accept, in, inception, you're kind of early at the at the front of the arc. I would guess that, in order to maintain your own quality control and see the stories work out and the subplots work out the way you want them to, especially until you get. You, you reach a certain threshold of popularity, you you're gonna be a little proprietary about your work. And and that's that sounds like how you feel, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Right now I have an idea of what I want to do. Um uh uh-huh. and more or less I would like to implement a writer team right now, but I don't know uh, it's it's something I have to work on myself in the sense of like kinda letting go, um, letting other people have a little bit of it. Uh, their ideas have a little bit of control of different characters and mm-hmm. hopefully opening myself up to, okay, this is different because that's not what I see him or her doing. So yeah, just kind of, uh, when that time comes, I will, I will definitely work on it. Hopefully be open minded to um, letting a uh, new blood in. All right. So, You've got you've got these characters, you've got this universe. Um, let people know a little bit about where you think your story is going to go. So you can kind of, I mean, if you wanted to get people interested in in the universe that you've created, um, how 
how do you describe it? You know, let's let's pretend we're at uh, at at you know the the Philly Comic Con or Pittsburgh Comic Con or something like that. When people come up and say to you, "Okay, so so tell us a little bit about your story and your characters." Um, can you describe a little bit about some of your characters and what it is that their blood brings to the table in terms of their powers? Okay. Um, it's, uh, somebody came up to me at the Comic Con. I would tell them it's a superhero comic. Uh, it's the, your basic comic of uh, good versus evil. Um, if they wanted to know something about the characters, I would start with that. You know, Aftershock, he's the leader of uh, the Beijing group, and his powers are. Pretty much uh, uh, follows his name, like Quake. Um, he gets a, a charge uh, from inside his body, and um, he's able to create many earthquakes, like the after, you know, um, after quakes. Um, I have uh, another character. Her name is Nakata. Um, she's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to tell too much about her because I would like to bring it into the story. But her skin is, um, she's in, indestructible. You can't um, hurt her. She feels no pain. She doesn't get sick. Um, there's a backstory to that as well of how she gets uh, her powers. Um, uh-huh. There's um, a character off of me. His name is uh, Shadow Gazer. And. Uh, is uh, him and the shadow form, it, it comes over his body, they form as one, and he's able to walk through walls and uh, use shadows as uh, uh, as uh, for traveling, you know, from different areas. So he goes through the shadow to another area of where he wants to go. Um, he, it, shadow portals, uh, that's what I call it. And... Um, I want them to know that it's a action comic, uh, hopefully with a, uh, a storyline that they would like. Um, but um, try to I'll, I'll try to show them at least have a variety of characters. Try to show them some of what they could do, or tell them some of what they could do, and hopefully it would uh, grab them, grab their attention. Uh huh. And and so like when you were younger, you started out with stick figures, and then you you know you you you're at this point now. Um, how was it? Um, you know, I guess one of the things that I always ask uh, black creatives is, you know, where where did the impetus for drawing characters who looked like us come from? I mean, is that just natural to you, or was that you know, is there a deliberate uh, is there a deliberation in in how you construct your characters? And then the other part is, is there any sociology associated with with being black that that kind of carries through your stories as well? Um, I, when I was younger, to be honest with you, I don't I couldn't even tell you if I had any black characters. Um, I, I don't you know I, I don't think that was on my mindset or anything. Being younger, um, right. Being, when me and my cousin started uh, working on them, that's when visually I started to feel like um, at at this moment in time, I didn't feel there was any black characters that were like icons in the sense of like Spider-Man, Wolverine, Superman in them. Oh, sure. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So creating characters, I was looking to try to hopefully uh, – Go ahead and maybe have a, a, a character of color be mm-hmm. hopefully an icon of what we see today, superhero wise. So uh, I think at one time that was my pretty much my goal. So um, creating the characters, then I was trying to create a black character that would hopefully grab on and become a, a, an icon of one day. Mm-hmm. And and then what about you know obviously there's the look. Um, do you carry through with with customs, with culture, with sociology, anything anything like that that's you know readily identifiable as as being black oriented or black themed? 
Um, I, I, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm just curious, you know, because, you know, when people do a creative universe, when people put together a creative universe, you know, it's it's based upon, obviously, whatever it is that they envisioned for for the overall look and feel of what's going on. And some people base their mythology in their in their creative universe on on um, African culture. Some base it on urban American culture, things like that. Mm-hmm. Is it, I'm just I'm just wondering if is there you know a, a sociology that's identifiable in your work um, because thematically it's something that you thought of or that that you wanted to bring to the table. There it is. It, it's it's. Uh... I, I put a twist on it because um, pretty much with the characters that have the enforced blood, they're all uh-huh. the same. So I do have like a, um, with their blood being, um, you know, the uh, the issue more or less of how to get their powers and stuff like that. There's uh, right. there are different um, scenarios where pretty much I use the the, uh, they could be the, uh, different colors, but because they're a certain rate, uh, blood uh, race of, of that enforced, that means that they're different, and there are some uh-huh. like prejudices and stuff like that in there. So yeah, I would, I would have, to, yeah, I would say uh, do have some of that in there. Well, I mean, when you talk about blood, blood con- conveying or yeah, blood conveying. Powers, you know, obviously you're talking about kind of like a genetic basis for what's going on. Would that be fair to say? Yes, it would be fair to say. Yes. Okay. All right. So, all right, you've got you've got all of this going for you. You've got this creative universe that you you really do have a good handle on your arc. You've got great characters, and, and they really look good. You know, it's not like these are, you know, this is this is average work this is above average work um when you think about where you may be taking this a uh, few years down the road um you mentioned that this is going to be this is going to be something you know a universe that you're going to be playing inside of for a while um where where do you think this is going to take you um have you i mean you mentioned you've got kind of like story arcs in your head to go on for quite some time um are you going to expand out? Uh, oh, and, and the other thing is, I'm, I'm a little curious if you can answer. Let's answer this one first. What kind of feedback have you gotten from your work? Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of positive feedback. Some, uh, some, some have been comparisons to uh, other characters uh, that do exist. But um, right now, a lot of positive uh, feedback. Uh, with all the various different characters that I've been displaying, especially on Facebook and Instagram, mm-hmm. um, a lot of positive. I mean, people like what they have, uh, like what I have, and they're pretty much um, saying no, they want to get the first three issues. So right now, it's very positive. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, as for uh, your first question of uh, kind of branching, it all depends on where everything goes. If it's Receive well, and, and um, I would love to expand it. Um, of course, I want to do uh, all all the types. Of I would love to get it in animation form. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it all depends on how it's received. But I, I have ideas of what I want to do if it's received well. Um, okay, so um, and. Would you consider your work, um, let's say, preteen friendly, you know, children friendly? Um, yes, uh, I will go probably about <laughs> uh, 11, 11 and up. Uh, okay. So uh, from about there, yeah. You know, the reason mm-hmm. why I ask is, you know, sometimes people want to know if is this appropriate for my kids? Can I let my kids see this? Um, you know, will there be anything that I you know that that parents wouldn't want their kids to look at. That's the that's the only reason why I asked that. There's no blood. There's no gore in it, and uh-huh. I'm kind of um, like a, 
a throwback. More, more or less, um, the way my mother did stuff is before we got a chance to watch it, she would at least go over it, watch it, whatever. And then if she felt like it was good enough to go, she would let us do it. So uh, mm-hmm. if, if parents did that, I recommend look it over, read it. If you think it's good enough for your kid, then then give it to them. Um, but that's what I would say right now. I mean, like, mm-hmm. I, there's no blood and gore in it, so it's, it's balance is balance, which sure is a lot of balance, but there's no blood and gore in it. Yeah, and and what about <clears throat> excuse me, what about overt sexuality or anything like that? Yeah, it might, uh, be, uh, right now, none, none is in there, but um, there might be some undertones uh, where I well, don't yeah. think kids will catch on. Yes, yeah, so, you know uh, some of the cartoons were where there were undertones that adults would probably open their eyes, but kids didn't catch on to. Um, sure. There might be some of that, yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're putting out a pretty solid product that that has broad appeal. And and from you know the way you describe the way people are reacting to it, it, it's it's pretty popular at least in terms of those people who check it out. Um, what what kind of I mean when uh, when people meet you at and and it sounds like you go to several of these uh, comic conventions in your area. Have you been outside of you know the Pittsburgh area in terms of? going and, and meeting the people, you know, meeting the people who would be checking out your work? Um, I went to one in Philly. Um, it was a Comic-Con in Philly um, that I mm-hmm. went to this. The, um, East Coast, um, ECBA, I, I'm, I'm trying to say it right. I went there uh, almost two years ago. Um, okay. But, that's probably the only one that I've went to outside of uh, Pittsburgh. Um, this year I'm trying to go to Baltimore's Comic-Con, and I would like to go to one. I've been invited to one in Nevada that I would like to try to go to as well, mm-hmm. and that's in August. Um, uh, right now those are the only in Pittsburgh. Those are the only three that financially I can probably afford to go to. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm always around Friday nights to do this radio show. I'm I'm going as far out of the house as I can afford to go. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, at least at least you're getting out there. Um, what kind of response do you get from the website? You know, are you getting people you know from different locations? You know, outside of obviously your circle there. Um, what about across America or even international? Do do people get hold of you there and um, you know give you feedback on on the work that you've done? Uh, right now, more more on Facebook and IG, um, Instagram. I get a okay. lot more feedback from there. Um, so far, um, I've had a great reception. You get your few that say. They didn't like it, but uh, right now a lot of people are saying they they like what they they start, they like beige, and so I'm hoping to keep that keep that going. Well, I mean, if if you don't, you uh, <laughs> yeah. you're kind of wasting, you know, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I I do a comic and nobody likes it. Everybody hates me, and and they can't stand to talk to me. Well, are you making any money? I just told you I'm doing a comic that nobody likes and everybody hates me. Uh, so <laughs> that would that would just kind of mess up that whole financial thing, wouldn't it? Kind of ruin yes, the revenue would. stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and and so I mean, let's ask this question: Are you is this? Do you have like a like a day job and you're doing this on the side, or are you doing well enough where this is your your primary source of revenue? To live off of, I mean, how how is it going for you, from a business um, perspective? Business perspective, still trying to get the word out about my business. Um, right. As, so right now, I'm still uh, a lot of not a lot of people know about what I have. Um, right. But as I I have two jobs, I work two full time jobs. I work seven days a week, and I have six kids. So you see, we're pretty much why I have to work. Uh, Two jobs, but I uh, 
have two jobs, uh, work 80 hours a week, and I I try to write when I get a chance, um, like on the weekends, but uh, not not yet where I would like to be able to. This would be a 24-hour thing that I could work on, hopefully soon one day. Let's see how. Well, I mean, what a lot of what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, in terms of the hours that you spend in in the service of your art, sometimes, you know, the art part is the easy and the quick part compared to the marketing part, the getting the word out, the uh the the taking care of social media, the taking care of, you know, whatever you have to do in terms of marketing. And and then, you know, here you've got you have a very full life. You've got a lot of kids, you've got I mean, there's a lot going on, so it it makes it a lot more difficult for you to be able to push that forward. Um, mm-hmm. And 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 so you know you do all of that. How, how many hours in a week, you know, can you devote to? I mean, the question always comes down to how many hours in the week can you devote to trying to get, you know, the 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 word out and trying to put together any kind of marketing campaign to do this. I mean, uh, you know, you're finding out that that the difficulties are a matter of of actual physical hours, right? Right. Right. Um the, right now mostly it's more or less uh whatever free time I can't get. But I will tell you this uh a, a lot of uh I do a lot of marketing through Facebook and um Instagram. Um uh-huh. uh I call my I, what I call is I go to the laboratory. That's like inside my head, and where I do spend most of the day uh, working on stories and stuff like that. So I'm always in the laboratory. It's just a matter of uh, when I get a chance to jot down what I have created in the laboratory. So. Did you say laboratory with a B or laboratory with a BR? Laboratory uh, with a with a with a V. No, with a B. Oh, with a B. Okay. Yeah. Like no, Dexter's because I was thinking. Lab, yeah. I was thinking it, <laughs> because with two with two part time jobs, if you can get away to the can to do some of your creative work, that's not a bad deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm just saying. You know. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but that's pretty cool. I mean, stop and think about how full your life is. You still have gotten as far as you have. And, you know, the people in the chat room are saying, you know, you are doing a hell of a job in terms of your artwork. Your artwork is great. I mean, it's stellar. And and that that does, I mean, that's that goes a long way to getting people to look at what you've got. And then with the kind of care that you seem to be putting together for your, your storylines, um, it, it seems like success is probably a matter of time, not so much, you know, where you have to bootstrap everything and really struggle. It sounds like, and it looks like, you're you're well on your way to getting some pretty cool things done. How do you feel about, you know, I obviously I, I would guess that one thing you think is, well, it's not happening fast enough. But how do you feel okay. about, you know, what you have to offer? It it seems pretty good, man. Are you are you are you do you feel good about it? Yes, I feel very good about uh, what's going on right now. One of the things that uh, I set out for when I started was um, how how the artwork would be. Uh, I feel like that is the first thing that everybody looks at uh, before right. they start to read or anything. You grab them with uh, artwork, the uh, artwork. So um, I, I tried to find the, the the best artist I could to go ahead and. Um, when it came for the first three books, the artist that was going to be for the upcoming books, and artists that could create uh, work on the characters for me. So um, once I found the person, each each one, I felt like that's that was my first goal is to grab somebody that would visually grab people to want to read the book. <clears throat> and and so, but I mean, you know, you. When you look at your work and you look at what else is offered out there, do you do you feel pretty good about where you are creatively and in, in how you execute your art? 
or, and when I say art, I mean both the 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 drawing and the writing. Um, yeah, I feel very good about all uh, with, uh, the artwork and the writing. Um, I, I bounce my stories off of uh, some of the people that I'm planning on working with and uh-huh. uh, see their reactions to see how they feel about what I'm what I'm going where what direction the stories are going or what character that uh how how this character looks and what I'm going to do with them and um uh, go off of their reaction and I go off of exactly how I feel about it and I'm I'm excited about what directions of uh, certain characters and what the stories are going to be so right now I'm like you said, it pretty much is it's not going fast enough as fast as I would like it to go. But I'm I'm positive about everything. It's just a matter of uh, just letting people get a chance to read it. Yeah. Well, if if you know the the comments in the chat room are anything um, uh, representative of how people are finding your work, um, obviously it's just a matter of time. Um, so I mean, and and I know that's hard. I figure I'll probably be really, really famous long after I'm dead, which is not going to be putting a lot of money in my pocket. But you know, it's it's what keeps me going, man. You know, you gotta have you, you gotta have something. You know, I'm going. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be a hit. You're gonna be a hit when you are dust. That's when you're gonna be a hit. So, but I mean, the the other thing is you're also starting, and I know it's tough, you know, financially. But you're also starting to roll out more into public, you know. At least you've broadened your, you know, you've gotten out of Pittsburgh, you've gone to Philly. Um, have Have you put anything on on the map yet, or excuse me, on your calendar yet, for maybe getting out to some of the either the, the Black Age uh, conventions or some of just the a few more larger comic conventions? Um. I kind of have New York penciled in. That's where I would like to go. Um, uh-huh. Uh huh. The New York Comic Con. I think that's later on in the year. Um, that's one of the ones that do have penciled in. Uh, but mm-hmm. I would like to. There's one in Detroit, I think. Um, it sounds very interesting. Um, a black one where a black age uh, comic book convention. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm looking yeah. into a few of them, and I'm kind of penciling them in for next year, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but uh, right now, I just have a, a little set schedule of what I'm gonna do this year. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the other thing is, you know, you've got you have a family, so you've got you've got a lot of responsibilities pulling you different ways. And and I know that fitting all of that in is tough. You know, um, how old are how old are your kids? You said you had six. Yes, I have six. Uh, my oldest is um, she's sixteen. Uh-huh. Um, second to the oldest is about to be ten um, in April, and uh, I have a son that's uh, seven. I have a, a, a daughter, another daughter that's uh, she's five. She just turned five a couple weeks uh-huh. ago, and we just had twins in um, July, which uh, July first uh, there'll be one coming up this year. Twin boys, girls, or a mix? Twin girls. Twin girls. I have Twin five girls. girls and one boy. Oh, that poor guy. <laughs> oh, man. He's a 16-year-old, though, right? No, uh, he's kind of in the middle. He's pretty much a, he's, uh, he's under seven. My oldest is a... Uh, oh, man. He, mm-hmm. a boy, he, the only boy and in the middle. Right. Uh, right. We're gonna have to send him to summer camp or someplace, you know, just so he can get away for <laughs> for a few months, man, because that that's gonna be rough. Now, are any of them showing any inclination, you know, any art, or you know, artistic inclination? Um, not yet. Um, okay. but uh, the three, uh, three in the middle. Um, my uh, nine-year-old, seven-year-old, and um, a five-year-old. They're all into what I'm doing. Or into the uh, animation cartoons. We watch the Young Justice and all that stuff. They want to come out to the Comic Cons. So they're all into the superhero comic book stuff right now. So they're all following following me. Well, that's, I mean, that sounds pretty good. I mean, it, it, it also sounds like you have kind of like a growing built in audience for your work, too, that you can, you know, that, that can help you 
you know, at least from a, a, a story writing perspective, because remember, comics are probably the best way to get through to kids, you know? Um, right. Mm-hmm. It, it, it gives them, well, I mean, it's obvious what the, what the advantages are for kids. The, you know, you've got visuals, you have a story, you know, you, you can make a, you know, a morality play, you put a lot of things in a comic, and and a you know a preteen or a teenager is going to to read it, you know whether or not they get what you want out of it is another story. But it it is a you know a direct highway into what it is that they they do for entertainment. Um, when when you write, are you writing for a certain age group? Or are you writing mostly to kind of carry a story forward? I mean, I, I understand what you said about what ages you you're kind of shooting for or that that parents should choose make make the decision whether it's age appropriate or content appropriate for their kids but when when you write do you have any of those considerations kind of going off, off in the back of your head as you're creating um yes i do and uh i don't um i don't want to make anything uh there's a uh, you know, comic book, comic book, uh, the people that are kids, you know, fans, comic book fans, they are in the ages vary from wherever. You can be an older person, you can be middle age, uh, middle age, or you can be young in your in your twenties or whatever. But uh, I, I'm when I write, I shoot for something that's probably um, where most to grasp on what I'm trying to uh, trying to do with it, and. Um, um, try not to shoot for anything to. I don't know. I don't know. And that, uh, and the, when I come around to it, certain stories, I guess I do doctor them up to where, you know, um, it wouldn't be uh, too for the age group that I would, would like to start off with. You know, it wouldn't be too over their heads. Right. Well, there's, you know, there's, there's. The, the intellectual part, you know, what age group are you writing at for what age level or, or reading level you're writing for. And then and then there's also, you know, what is age appropriate in terms of what the action is and things like that. Um, you know, it, it sounds to me like you're more story oriented, um, but but in being story oriented, are you, you know, are you thinking about, well, let me present this this way so that I get a wider readership. It's kind of like when you do a movie. You know, you can you can make the des- deliberate choice to make your movie PG, PG thirteen, or R. Right. Um, right. And and people will sometimes people will even go to the to the extent of filming, you know, a PG thirteen version, an R version, and a not rated version, you know, to, just in case, or maybe even to see. If they can broaden their revenue, so when when you're creating your stories, um, how do you you know is there is there anything conscious? It kind of almost sounds like it's not really a conscious decision on your part how you're doing it. You're you're more just story driven, and then the story is the story. Is that That's more like a, the way it is. Yeah, that is more like the way it is. Um, I don't think that it's, oh, when it comes down to it, that it will be um, where, you know, uh, kids won't be able to um, indulge in it. Um, uh, but I, I think you're right in the sense of where um, the story is the story, where I'm going to go with it is where I'm going to go with it. But I don't think that any of my stuff is where um, – Adults have to worry, worry about, you know, the uh, the content in it. Sure, sure. Um, hang on a second. You're listening to the Genesis Science Fiction Radio Show, a service of the Black Science Fiction Society dot com website. And today's uh, oh, this is the February third, twenty eighth, two thousand fourteenth edition. And I'll tell you, we're at the end of February, and I am so sick of winter. I could say bad words. Our special guest tonight is Christian Hall. He is the CEO and president of Second Coming Comics. And you can find his work at 
2MD for second coming, and then comics with an X dot net. Um, you can check out his work there. Um, he's got a YouTube channel, and uh, I'm not going to give you all of those letters. Somebody can pop it up in the uh, in the uh, chat room. But for those who listen to this as a podcast, he does have a YouTube channel. You have, and and what are the other accounts you have? You're you've been doing. Um, you mentioned somebody mentioned that they found your Twitter account. Where else can they they kind of follow you? Um, I have a Twitter account. It's under Second Coming Comics Two N D. Coming Comics with an X. Um, also, I have a live page, Facebook, the same thing. But you can also uh, find me under Christian Hall. That also displays my artwork. Um, and Instagram is also the same um, as uh, Second Coming Comics. And, uh, and my name as well. So I have an Instagram, a Facebook, a Twitter account, and my um, website. And uh, you know, pass your name around as 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 you want them to, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, okay, and and so when we when we talk about you know the, the whole marketing thing, and and plus having the whole family, trying to do the comic, um, working eighty hours a week, uh, it's amazing that you do what you do with you know with that kind of commitment, you know, all those different commitments. Um when I mean when when are you most productive? I mean when you talk about having eighty hours worth of work a week, when when do you, you know, give us kind of an idea of how you go ahead and and get your day going as far as or or when you fit in, you know, creating this this great comic. Um like I said, boy, that's uh most of it is in my head. Um, during the course of the day, um, with one of the jobs that I do, I do get a little bit of um, because I do a lot of walking on it. I do I do get a lot of uh, time, to, just time, kind of to myself, to where I can go ahead and let my mind go, and 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 it, it goes out into comic book world and do, do uh, work on the stories then. And also the second job as well. I do have a little time of uh, um, kind of some of my friends there uh, bounce off the ideas with and stuff like that. So we talk about a lot of comic book stuff as well. And mm-hmm. uh, I get a little time there as well uh, when we're not busy and stuff. But uh, more or less on the weekends when I'm home, um, kids are in bed and uh, kind of just, I guess, boring my wife with uh, some of the stuff that I come up with and she's acting like she's interested. So. That's probably. <laughs> that's probably. I hope time. she's not listening to this show, and I hope she doesn't pick up the podcast because you know saying stuff like that does come back to haunt you every now and then. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But, it, but it, at least, but I mean, at least if she pretends that she's interested, I mean that, that you know, if you're gonna do the do the math, that's still a pretty good thing, you know. Right. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, all right. So you talked a little bit about somewhere down the road you might want to turn this into, you know, uh, maybe a motion picture comic or maybe even um, movie, something along those lines. Talk about talk about how you're going to make that transition because, you know, as much as people, you know, think comics can be turned into movies, you know, you. You look at what they ended up doing with, you know, the DC and the Marvel world, and it it doesn't really resemble much, very much the um, the comic world from which they were spawned. Right. Um, how do you how do you think you're going to be able to make that transition? Oh, um, I've always said that, uh, you know, pretty much uh, some of the some of the comic book movies that I have said, I said, oh, they wouldn't be able to do that with my stuff. I want it to be exactly what I have in the book. But I guess uh, the people that come out with the money and stuff like that, and they're saying, well, we want to do this. Uh, I, it all depends. I mean, like, I, I would like it to be something that if it does come out and stuff like that, that it, it has a great storyline that follows comic book pretty much to the T and um, and it's going to be good for people to go see. 
because mm-hmm. you don't want to you don't want to just say okay well, I'll take the money and you go ahead and do what you want with it. Um, I, would, I really want it to be uh, you know where people are going to see it and they're going to be like at least they follow the comic book. This is good, you know what I mean? Right. Well, and then but you know you have to because you, it is a different medium. You're, you're going to have to look a little bit harder at how you're going to do the story, how you're going to execute. Um, and and I don't think I mean. Just sitting here, I don't see how you're going to have that big of a problem because you do take a lot of painstaking time and care to, to craft your stories. Um, but in terms of, you know, working alone and things like that, it's it's tough as hell to do a, uh, let's say you do a 3D, uh, 3D animation of your work. You know, you're talking about a, a, a huge production de- team, or at least a, a substantially bigger production team than you just sitting there and doing it by yourself. And and it is it is a truly collaborative work. Right. Um, that you know, there there is a whole lot that goes into that that you're probably going to have to consider. But in terms of the storytelling, uh, it it sounds like you're going to be retaining your your intellectual property and not giving that up. Um, are you is, is that your plan? You know, what if somebody comes to you and says, "Gee, Christian, uh, let me let me just give you a, a couple of million dollars and take all of your work, your intellectual property, uh, and buy it from you." I mean, it, it, are you going to be inclined to do that, or is this something that you really want to retain? control over and keep going for, for quite some time? Uh, some of that I really want to retain. Um, I feel like, uh, I guess, waiting um, for the right person that's going to say, well, we want this to be uh, quality and we want to follow what you have uh, to the key. I think that's what, that, that's more or less what I would want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I want to put out. I want to put out a product that's going to be, you know, hopefully, be good. So um, I want. I want to at least wait until somebody's going to follow the comic book to the T. Right. And uh, well, I mean, some people are willing. I, I'll tell you, you know, if somebody came to me and said that they wanted to drop a big bucket, and it'd have to be a big ass bucket, bucket <laughs> of money in my lap for well, for for some of my work. You know, the, the the hard part about that is it's hard to say no, you know, right. because and, – and the other part that's even harder for creatives is a lot of creatives don't realize that once you say yes and you get that check, you you have no further say in, in how right. your work is going to be depicted, how people are going to, you know, tell the story – whether the story is even going to be good or not. And and that's a tough thing, man. And a lot of people don't want to have to face that. But I was at a networking meeting where somebody and, – and who was there? I think I told this story before. Somewhere local here in Chicago, and Tim Kazarinski from uh, – he was on Saturday Night Live for a few seasons. I don't know how many. And, and basically it was a, a networking meeting for people who are interested in film, trying to sell their screenplays and things like that. And somebody said, hey, uh, can you put in your, in your uh, contract when you sell your, your option that uh, you have to be on the set all the time to make sure that they don't mess your stuff up? And, and some people were just nodding going, oh, that's a really good question. And, and I'm just shaking my head going, I have fallen into a bunch of really stupid film people because they don't realize that, you know, once the money changes hands, it's not yours anymore. So right. I mean, the, right. the fact that you want to keep your intellectual property shows that you, you definitely want to, you, you have plans. You have, it sounds like you've got good long-term plans. I mean, you're, you're thinking about a motion comic or movie, Right. Yes, very much and, and, the animation. Yeah, and then, then and then where else do you think you might be branching out if you have that opportunity? Uh, t shirts, um you know, toys. Um, whew, um 
whatever else I haven't mentioned, uh, I would like to be a part of all. <laughs> it, it, where, wherever that revenue comes from, yes, that's exactly. that's where you want to go. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, look at look. I, there there are all kinds of spinoffs. I mean, I I wish that I had come up with an idea like Barbie. I mean, look what the Barbie franchise brings in for whomever you know, whoever owns that. I mean, to to ha- see those kinds of spins spinoffs. And and Barbie hasn't even been in a. Is, has there been a Barbie movie that you know of? Uh, I not not yet, but there's been a lot of. Uh, they have a lot of DVDs of uh, you know, like the computer animated stuff. So straight yeah, to, straight to DVD stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, was, I mean you know, being able to, if if your characters reach that franchisable stage where you know, that I think that's where the big money comes in. I could be wrong. I don't know anything. Um, okay, so, so you know, your your brother says you're a little prickly to work with at this point. A lot of what you're looking at doing for the future requires some collaborative work. Um, how do you think you're going to bridge that gap and be, you know, and, and, and be a little more accessible in terms of how you work with other people? I mean, have you thought about that long term? Because collaborations really can help you. Um, even if it's just to the extent of maybe getting someone who can help you with the business part, because the business part is really tough. Yes, um, it is. It, how, are you looking at how you're going to be able to branch out? Because that's that's not an inconsiderable thing to do. Um, yes, looking out how to, how to branch out um, more or less when it comes to um, collaborating with, uh, depending on what it is, Talking over my wife, um, you know, find out exactly what she thinks I should do. Um, you know, probably uh, a couple other uh, people who mean a lot to me. Talk to some of my family about uh, um, what I, in what terms I should do. Um, sure. So, kind of go over some of the things and find out if I'm going to make the what kind of decision I'm going to make or whatever thoughts that I have. Am I making the right decision? in their opinion or not. Well, it sounds like you have, at least you have some very decent support people around you. Um, it helps that it's family, too, because there's that trust level. Uh, a lot of people have gotten into partnerships with other people and then found out somebody was trying to, you know, while they were out at work, they were at their house stealing their stuff. Um, it, you know, in terms of working with your brother, it sounds like you've got a good you know, relationship there where he's, uh, and you said he wants to work with you. Is Did you mention that he was an artist as well or not? I don't remember um, what you said he, he An did. artist in the sense of a writer. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, we plan on working together. Um, it's just a, when, I, when I need him, he said he's ready. So it's just a matter of when. But, yeah, we're going to work together. There's a couple other people that I've talked to. Um, to try and get like a writer's team together and stuff like that. But I've, I've talked to all of them and told them, be patient with me um, in the sense of like me letting go and being able for you guys to go ahead and um, come up with your ideas or put your ideas into it. Um, but I think after they see where the stories are going and what directions and stuff like that, they'll, they'll be able to see where I'm at and what what, what I'm about. So, mm-hmm. I, I think I think it was, I think it'll be all good. Okay. Um, all right. So, you mentioned that uh, you you know you you put together characters that look like us, but you're not. I mean, you're not. You know, there's the being black themed is a. It kind of comes along with the story, but it's not a main focal point. Um, when when you think in terms of right, you know writing your stories, um, who are, who are your who are you writing for? What do you who do you think is your audience? When you when you put together a story, do you think in terms of uh, you know putting together a story that would be except more accessible to people of color? Or just you're hoping to put together a very good generic comic book that happens to contain people of color. 
um, do do you do you think about that kind of uh, with a purpose when you're creating? I think of it, yes, I do, in the sense of uh, we're looking at it for uh, people of color. I'm looking for them to be kind of proud of what they see, in the sense of, mm-hmm. like, um, uh, wow, this character is is black and, and he's dope and the stuff that he can do, and I like the type of character he is. Um, that's what I look for of people of color to look and see uh, that they're proud of what is going on and the fact that we can have these characters that are, you know, that are hopefully become uh, huge and icons and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm looking really honestly, I'm hoping that for real that there, when it's looked at as a comic book, there is no color. That uh, other races of people can grab it and, and look and say, wow, this is nice, I like it, and they're not looking and saying, well, I've got all these black characters in it, or, um, you know, I want, I just, I'm hoping that they read it and they like it and, it, and color is not an option. Yeah, and, and, and to that end, um, writing a good story is probably the best way to ensure that that happens. I mean, a good story transcends color. You know, right. um, mm-hmm. if if you have if you have great writing, you know, like you said, people are going to go, oh damn, this is a good story, and and not realize or not even think about the fact that so and so is you know whatever, um, and and so but but you still want to put pod, positive imagery in your characters positive imagery from, from a sociological, from a black perspective, um, and, and that is deliberate on your part, right? Right. Yes. Yep. Right. That's exactly, exactly right. Yeah, and have you gotten feedback from people in kind of in that regard? Well, with the first three issues, I want to be honest, there are a few characters in there, but no, there's it features – a, a villain of the race. So, more or less, right at this moment, none of the characters have been introduced. So, with the next book coming out, one of the characters are being introduced, and the story takes a different turn from what you've seen in the first three. And then it mm-hmm. goes from there as uh, the team starts to unify and you start to uh, different characters are being implemented into the story. Yeah, it's. I mean, and that sometimes that's hard. I mean. There are times when I when I have introduced a character and then I realize that I either have to do some expository writing to give that character some depth, um, so that you know people don't go, well, who is he and what is he supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Um, and and so you're at that stage now, being kind of early on, where you are you're introducing the characters out of your universe. Um, do you have a hard time with that? With that kind of pacing, would you rather, you know, are you impatient with it? Do you try to get ahead of it, or or are you are you deliberate and and kind of laid back, knowing that as you go along, all of these various steps are going to be filled in. Um, how how do you look at your own writing? Uh, there is some impatience. Uh, you know, when it comes to I, I, I do have some impatience. I'm like, oh, I'd like to do this. I want to do this right now or just put this person in there right now. Um, but um, I'm going to try and stick with what I have in the sense of, uh-huh. okay, this is the path. We'll do this, and we'll, then we'll put this person in it. We'll do this, or we'll put this in there. So uh, there is some impatience, but I'm trying to stay stay be patient disciplined. and be focused. Yes, be disciplined. Yes, I am. You know, it sounds like you got it all, man. You you've got good work ethic. You've got great art. You have good story. Um, I can't see how this won't be successful for you. I mean, I really, and I and like I said earlier, I know that it's tough when you know you have something good. <clears throat> excuse me, and it seems like it's taking too long for everybody else to discover that you've got something good. Mm-hmm. Um, I you don't sound like you're going to be discouraged easily at all. So 
you know, all of the, the necessary components for success seem to be going your way. Um, are you, you know, do you think you're going to hang in there? Or, you know, it sounds like you're disciplined enough to kind of wait and see. Um, but I, right now, yes, I, I think I am going to hang in there. I actually have no choice right now. Um, uh-huh. There's a couple of things that are in the works that hopefully um, – Market wise will be grab people and they'll be like, Wow, I didn't know about this and they grab their attention. I got a couple of things in play. Uh I can't really uh reveal yet, but yeah, um so right now just uh trying to stay patient and stay uh stay uh, focused on like you said, just um I'm excited about it but it's I'm going to hang in there no no matter what because this is what I want to do. You know, you could you could tell some of the people a little bit of something that you've never told them before because then that way I could tell everybody I got a scoop from you on something that hadn't been revealed ever before. So um, <laughs> anything you want to <laughs> – uh, you're not buying that, huh? I tried to say it smooth. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would love to, but it's in the works, and uh, I want to see how it pans. I mean, it starts to pan out. We ha- we haven't started it yet, but when it starts, and I will probably be a little bit more ready. More forthcoming. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's something. It's going to be something good, though, and uh, hopefully, we'll see how long it takes to get it done too. Yeah, and and now your work. Uh, people can can they order your your work on your website? Yes, um, if you go to my website there, you can order, um, I think all three books, I'm almost positive, all three books are $250. Um, uh-huh. there's, there's only three out right now. The fourth one will be out uh, late late summer, early fall. Um, but, yes, you can order it off my website. Very cool, very cool. And for people who are listening in on the podcast, it's at www second coming coming comics dot net and that's two N D coming and comics with an X. Two N D coming comics dot net. And uh that's where people can pick up your work. Um when you go ahead I mean one of the things I like to remind people usually I wait till way too late when I'm running out of time, but you know one of the things that I like to see is um, people at BlackScienceFictionSociety.com supporting other artists' work, and one of the easiest ways to do that is to post up whenever you're going to do an appearance or you're going to have, you know, any kind of rollout of a new product or a new book coming out. If you post that up on the BlackScienceFictionSociety.com um, events calendar. When people are looking for something to do for a weekend or just checking to see what may be happening around, you know, BSFS, um, mm-hmm. if you put your your information up there, it gives us an opportunity to say, oh man, he's going to be at that thing in, in in Pittsburgh or that or Philly or or even New York. We have a lot of BSFers in um, in New York, so if you could remember to post up any appearances uh, that you're going to to be making, you know, any shows you're going to be attending because then that way people who do admire your work and want to meet you um, will know where to do so. So just keep that in mind. And it also lets us know, you know, what's going on, man. Um, So you got got a bunch of kids. You got two jobs. Actually, (laughs) you got four jobs. You got four jobs. You got two yeah. that you punch. You got two that you punch in on. You got a family to take care of, and and you're doing you know this comic book. Um, uh, can I ask how old you are? Yes, I'm uh, 42. 42. All right. So you're you're definitely still got some gas in the tank. Right. You know, normally <laughs> you, you do at 42, but I, I'm willing to bet that there are times when you think, man, could I just get famous so I could take a vacation? Um, <laughs> how, how, are are you holding up okay trying to do all of this? Um, no, uh, yeah, I I don't really like to complain. I'm always tired, but you know that comes with territory right now. Um, but yes, I am holding up okay. Definitely am. Yeah. Um. And and you you claim uh. 
you, you claim your, your wife just kind of patronizes you and goes, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, that's good, yeah. <laughs> But it, so, it it sounds like, I mean, it, it, behind all that, it does sound like you have a really great partner and someone who supports you. Um, but, I mean, that's got to help a lot, especially when you talk about having, you know, when you have six kids, you definitely have to have a uh, a great partnership in order to, to keep things kind of flowing. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about how she supports you and, and, and how's that working out. Uh, she's she's the one who uh, created the website. She's worked on the website. Um, uh-huh. Put my PayPal together. Um, she's definitely uh, my rock stays behind me and everything. And right now she's made it so that I can at least get some sleep to go to work every day. She stays up with the the twins that still don't sleep through the night yet. So um, she's definitely um, supportive of um, my rock and just keeps keeps me going. Um, I'm gonna. How old are the twins? Uh, uh, eight months tomorrow. Eight months tomorrow. Eight months. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you a title of a book that's gonna save your sanity. No, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm open know. ears. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, this guy. It, it, and, and I'm sorry, everybody else. Everybody else, you can turn to another channel. But his name is Mark Weisbluth, and he's uh, he's at uh, Northwestern University here in Chicago, and he has the definitive book. It saved my mind. It's called Healthy Sleep Habits, Happy Child, and it's Mark M A R C W E I S S B L U T H. If you get that book, you read that book, you you can make your baby sleep. I mean, when I had my first child, I was walking around outside with that baby thing where you hang it on the front like a zombie going, please, mm-hmm. please, somebody <laughs> put this child to sleep. You right. know, I had, an, I had an old babysitting trick where I would hold them over an unlit gas burner and they would fall right to sleep after about a few seconds. But, <laughs> but you don't want to do that with your own child, you know, right. because it's just bad form. <laughs> but seriously, if you get that book, and, and honest to God, it's called Healthy Sleep Habits, Happy Child a step-by-step program for a good night's sleep. Uh, and it, it'll also come in handy if you have any other children because this, it, it, and for those people who are easily offended, they call him the sleep Nazi because he, he can make you, he can show you how to teach your children, your infants, to sleep. So if, cool. if you're having trouble with that, uh, just, uh, you know, listen to the podcast, go look up the book, it's what is it. It's like thirteen dollars on Amazon, um, but it, it made all the difference in the world. And you know what? The thing, the reason why I'm telling you is because if you get more sleep and you manage to retain your sanity, we're going to see more of your work, and we're going to see it come faster. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I, you know, yeah, you're right, you're I, I don't, right. I don't care about having a vested interest in seeing you mm-hmm. succeed. Um, I'm not one of those zero-sum Negroes who thinks, oh, man, if Christian gets a dollar, then that's a dollar that doesn't go into my pocket. So right. I'm just letting you know that right away. But, I mean, that, that book did save my sanity. Laugh if you want. Hang on a second. You're listening to the Genesis Science Fiction Radio Show, a service of the Black Science Fiction Society.com website. This is our February 28th, 2014 edition, and uh, – my my very special guest is Christian Hall, and he is the CEO and president of Second Coming Comics. Find him at uh, www.2nd for Second Coming and Comics with an X dot net. Um, so, is there anything else you want to tell people out there about what you have coming, or what you 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 know you you even have done in the past that you would like them to know about? Hmm. Um, let's see. And I don't, I I don't just, have to uh, put you on the spot. I just want, you know, just in case I for, we didn't talk about something or I forgot about something. Right. Uh, so right now I'm just excited about the because the book is already drawn up, everything. It's, uh, I'm excited about the next book and where the direction of uh, where the story is going. Um, just getting that uh, um, all done and getting that ready to be published. I'm, I'm really excited about the next book. Um, mm-hmm. Still working on uh, uh, I work with um, a friend of mine. His name is Barry Wong. 
I work with him. He and him work with care. We uh, he does characters for me. Um, excited about that uh, as I can continue to display some of uh, the uh, sneak peeks of the universe that uh, that I'm coming with. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, those uh, and like I said, the, the thing I can't reveal, but more or less, that's um that, that's what I'm excited about, and that's what um that I would like the other people to know that uh, look look out for. Um, Beijing for and the Nakata pretty soon, uh, late late summer, early fall. That is yeah, the you fourth one. Yeah, yeah, that that's the fourth one. Um, and and uh, how are sales of the first three? Just generally um, speaking, it, it, they're 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 average. Um, more or less, it, like I said, it's more what people know if they know about me or not, like that. Uh, but. Uh, People are still buying here and there. Uh, 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 you know, a few books here and there. Sell them out. Send them out um, when they right. uh, order them. So it's, it's it's they're not bad. They're, they're not where I want them to be, but not bad. Are that are your works available? Are you are, like are they on Amazon as well? No. Um, or not? Uh, no. I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do the, the uh, digital download here. I'm still working on that to get that done. Okay. Um, but I would like that to be off of my site as well. Um, sure. I, eventually, I might turn to the Amazon thing. I'm a little hesitant in the sense of like, uh, you, know, you know, I would like to keep as much revenue as I can coming in, in the sense of like not splitting it with uh, anybody else. Yeah, I, I think my advice on that is when you are trying to get seen. You know, at the very beginning, sometimes mm-hmm. you have to, you have, sometimes you have to forego the revenue in order to put you know put your works up. You know, I've I've had to do that, and uh, you know what I get for each book, you know, each one of my novels is is a damn shame. But um, having other people review my work and having a, having you know people who are you know looking for science fiction or whatever run across what I what I've done already, at least it's in a place that's a little more, you know, accessible for other people. So, you know, that that might be a hard calculation that you have to make in order to to get, you know, get your name out a little bit quicker. I mean, right. I don't, I'm not right. sure what you're doing for marketing and things like that. And, you know, obviously it's not for everybody. But, yeah, I made that calculation. And I said, okay, I can either make an additional, I don't know, maybe the difference is $10 per, per book, which is, it's considerable. But I don't think, you know, I would have the same visibility that I've got now. Right. Um, it, have, right. have you worked on, have you worked that out yet? Or are you still at the, I got to do the revenue thing? I mean, no, you know, it's, how, it's do, you, how do you make that? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's, no, it's, it's worked out and everything. It's, um. Uh, more or less, um, uh, like I said, I'm not not going to do it. It's just more or less right now at the moment. I'm trying to see if I could do it without that help yet. So um, it's just it's, it's it is an option to turn to. Okay. Um, by the way, somebody mentioned uh, we have we have a listener in Africa in Kenya who always uh, tunes into this show, and he says he can only get your website as a .com and not a .net. Do you have both? Um, do, URL? Do, I do have another one in the works. Uh, you know, we're working on another one because uh, I'm going to eventually change. Um, the .com is not even close to finish yet, but that uh, that is one that we're working on. Okay. All right. That was, that was just somebody that mentioned that in the chat room. Um, okay, so I guess the thing that I'm kind of interested in, you know, because I'm interested in film is, you know, when when you, I mean, how far out do you think you are from maybe putting together, you know, a motion picture comic or maybe even a uh, a movie? Have you are have you thought about maybe doing a, a web series for your work or? Where are you in terms of the the moving picture kind of uh, kind of thing that you want to do? Um, you're talking about animation, right? Exactly. Uh, whew. Um, 
I might be a little closer than um, I might be right around the corner of the uh, animation thing, but it, mm-hmm. uh, it won't be nothing extensive. It'll be probably a short. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens after that. But um, maybe a year away, maybe. That's not bad. I mean, that's not that far. You're you're going to have the fourth book out this year, right? Right. Yes, I am. And then, you know, in the meantime, you know, there, the nice thing is, is, you know, that not only are there a lot of nice tools out that help you do, you know, animation and things like that, but there are so many people out there who do such fantastic work and, and who who don't cost an arm and a leg. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it brings down the threshold to getting something like that done you know, it, it makes it a little more financially easy to to sustain. So, right. I mean, that's kind of exciting because when when I look at your artwork, when I think of this as, you know, an, a, an animated series, you can't help but get excited when you look at the quality of your images. So I think that's going to be pretty compelling. Uh, just don't get some really, really wimpy voice actors, okay? Right. <laughs> Actually, I want to do that myself. I would like to uh, try to do that. What you're gonna myself. do? You're gonna do all the parts? No, no, no. Uh, the oh, character, okay. all after, right. Character after me, and a few of the villains that I, yeah. that I, I know their voices and how I want them to sound. I would love to do something like that. Well, don't do them all yourself. I mean, go ahead. No, and no, no, no. Some people, you know. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So that's not bad. I mean, you know, at least you, you you're planning it out. And and the other thing is, you know, at the Black Science Fiction Society dot com website, there are all kinds of people who do all of these things. You know, you have animators, you have voice talent, you have um, you have artists uh, who who put together all of that. Um, you know, when you when you think about putting your stuff out there, and if you can animate your work as well as the artwork suggested suggests it is, it it is in no way, you know, uh, second rate. You know, you you can animate to to the to the extent that uh, you would see, you know, who, whomever, you know, like Marvel or DC or any of that. You know, instead of the 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 crappy, I call it destruction porn, all of these um, comic book movies, because basically all it is is just tearing stuff up, and folks mm-hmm. seem to like that. So that's, I mean, they're making money, so why would they change? Um, but, it, you know, it it seems like your work lends itself well to going, to going in that direction because the artwork is so stellar. Um, and I think that that's something you should be proud of. Um, you know, are you... You mentioned that you have some other people helping you with doing the artwork. Um, how it, is this quality control something that you're very, very hands-on about? Because it is great. Um, to be honest with you, I, I, the guy that I work with, uh, he is amazing. That uh, um, mostly the stuff that we send, he might tweak a little changes and stuff like that that I have, you know, that I, might, I already have drawn up. And he just he might add a dimension to it, but um, his his stuff is uh, he's he's that good. That honestly, uh, that if we do something from scratch that I might just come up with, and mm-hmm. he uh, takes down what I the park. tell him to do. Oh my goodness, he's 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 off the chain. Uh, I love his I love his stuff. He does, he, um, I, I'm hands on with it, but uh, we worked together for a while now to where honestly. Um, most of the stuff that he uh, sends me in return, I'm just like, yep, that's it. Uh, I don't want to change anything. That's fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so um, can you give, and, and don't give anything away unless you want to, but talk <laughs> a little bit about your story arcs that, that we're going to see coming up. I mean, are we going to see, <clears throat> excuse me, you, you mentioned that now, uh, I believe you said that, the story is working itself into current times, right? Right. And and so when when we talk about a story that's working in the current times, are we talking about like current 
current culture, current sociology, current um, uh, current events that will be reflected in your story? Um, yes. Current, uh, it's this town now. Or what's going on with uh, with our town now? Or more or less, the stuff that they deal with, of course, that I've implemented in the story. Uh, but yes, right. this town, this town now. Uh, some of the some of the stuff that is going on, and some of the stuff that I've created. <laughs> and and so, when people pick up your work. Do they see a completely different universe, or does you know does the, does you know everyday Earth, you know today's Earth? I, because I don't know your stories, and I apologize for not knowing. But um, you know what? Do we see kind of like your your characters' actions, morality, ethics, and things like that reflected in our current culture? Or, or are are the storylines, you know, divorced a little bit from today's America, today's Earth, um, you know? It's a, it's you, a, it's a, it's a little bit divorced from from uh, what, what we're going through and everything like that. Um, they have their uh, their own problems, their own um, situations that develop. It, it, it's the voice of what's going on here, you know. Um, uh huh. But uh, um, I don't know what else to say about that. It's, it's just uh. Oh no, I mean, I was just curious because you know, you know, a lot of people draw far in the future, okay, because it gives them a lot of freedom. All right, right, so you know, right. a lot of people do their science fiction uh, three thousand years in the future. A lot of people draw, or a lot of people tell their story um, uh, on another planet, okay, right. where mm-hmm. where there's no there's no America. You know, there's nothing there's nothing to suggest because it gives them the ultimate freedom in which to tell their story without having to worry about fitting it into an already existing mythos. So, you know, when when you you know, you've crafted your universe divorced from current current urban culture, yet we still have demonstrably um black characters in there. And so mm-hmm. I was you know, my curiosity was how do you fit all that together and, and how do you see that presenting itself to to your readers? You know, where 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 is their point of commonality with what's going on in in the stories and and maybe where's their point of departure where they have to supply you know their their own imagination in order to get the gist of and then follow along with the story Hmm. I don't know. I really never put any thought into that. That's um. I I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to stump you. It was just you know no. I was curious because <laughs> well you you understand why I asked the question though right? Yes, yes I do. Um, it's just um. Because when you look I, at when you look at creativity from that perspective, you know it, that that's that's the essence of where that where that story is coming from and where the mind is. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, think think about it. No, no, no. Think about it, and next time I have you on the show, you know, just write the write the answer down, and we'll cover it then. Um, Okay. (laughs) You know, because some people don't know. I mean, when somebody asks me, there are things I don't know, you know, about Mm -hmm. my writing that they'll say, you know, I was really curious about uh, how you did such and such and such, and I and 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 then I go, I did, and. <laughs> so there, you, so there you go. Um, all right. So here's here's the schedule of what you've got coming out. You've got the fourth book coming out. You've got the three that are available on sale now. Everybody get those. You've got the fourth one that's coming out later this year, maybe end of summer, in the fall. You think? Right. Early fall. Yep. And then, yeah. And then you're you're looking, you're investigating the whole um, 
animation of your universe to to come maybe or you're looking at you're you're examining the possibility of that coming out fairly soon after that or around the same time, right? Uh, I don't know if if that does happen. I don't know how long that will be. Um, but yeah, hopefully next year, maybe. Yeah, something like that. We'll see what That'd happens. That'd be great. And and you know your your the artwork that you have for your 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 universe is is stellar. I mean, it's it's. You know, if you were to ask me, I'd say it's better than what you see in these first-run Marvel comics. Um, to see that brought to life on the screen, and and not as real, you know, not as like the uh, what the Avengers and all of these me- movies we see with regular people, but to see your work animated and brought to the screen, I think is going to be very, very exciting and very, very compelling. So, I mean, mm. personally, I'm looking forward to seeing that, and I hope it's something that does come to fruition, because. Um, to to have that, I mean, that just opens up a whole new avenue for other people to appreciate your work, and I hope we're going to see that soon. Um, I would love to see that myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, do you think that you would, you personally would look at doing the, you know, learning the tools, learning the techniques, and maybe trying your hand at it, or you know, is it something where you really want to maintain the the quality of the story and concentrate on the story? And that's where you're going to kind of fixate to make sure that 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 the story is worthy of you know the art and the characters and the universe that you've created. I'm a, I'm a, I would like to dip my hands in as much as I can, but um, more or less, um, my my thing is the story, and even still, if we to become like animated or anything like that, I would love to have my hand in the story of, uh, you know, um, evolving that as well. Um, Mm -hmm. But more or less, um, my thing is uh, character creation and stories and backdrops and all that stuff. That's where where I live, yeah. Um, Well, and and plus you've got your your story arc. You know where everything's going Mm -hmm. and how how it's going to be prosecuted. So that, I mean, that's huge in itself. I mean, a lot of people start writing and they kind of have a vague idea, and then you know you see when they finish up, they it, you read it and you go, well, well, this isn't that good. Um, so <laughs> again, well, no, I'm I'm hoping, and and I don't think it's much of a hope at all. I think it's pretty much guaranteed that if you go into a motion picture comic, or or even go into an animated series, um, given the artwork that you've demonstrated already, this can't help but be, you know, with a good story, it can't help but be a success. So I mean I, I I wish that to you because I would I love to see that. that. I, no, I'm serious, man. I would love to see that. Um, yeah. When you, when you look at the way people are writing now, and let's let's go back to you know maybe black culture. When when you look at um, you've got Afrofuturism, which is picking up steam as not only a term, but there's a, there's a sociology to to the um, to the movement. When when you look in terms of the the more attention that black theme science fiction and black theme writing in general is getting, um, where how do you see yourself fitting into that? Where do you see? I mean, do you see that as something that's going to be that that is going to impact you? Um, in, in a significant way as we go along. Uh, and I know you and I know Yeah, I know yeah, for a positive, yeah. I know you said that you want to be you want your work to be considered great work first and with that that just happens to have black people in it. But you know with, with the kind of artwork you have and the kind of quality of your stories, people are going to you know are going to look at that facet of it and see how it may work out and, and see where it fits. Have you given much thought to to all of that yourself? Um, yeah, in the sense of more or less, um, I, 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 it could be nothing but positive. Um, uh, with um, you're talking about other creators, right? Mhm, mhm. Yes, and it could be nothing but positive. Um, on the sense of more or less, like trying to uh, 
either work with uh, others or go ahead and um, uh, that they can pave the way for for me as well to you know follow uh, the directions of uh, others that are going well. Mm-hmm. And and in the in in the oh go ahead I'm sorry. No, I just think it could be nothing but a, a positive impact. In, in that sense. Yeah, and then now, you know, given where you are today, um, do you have people in the past who you could point to who inspired you and and maybe who you, you know, who you may have, uh, who may have pushed you or, or incited, you know, the creativity that you're showing now? Do you have any mentors that you would look back at and say, you know, when I saw this, uh, it, it, it moved me? Um, I, I want to say his name right. Uh, Dwayne Duffy is that is that his name? I, the, I don't uh, know. Um, trying to remember the creator of um, uh, he worked for DC. Um, uh, it's, he I think he had a lot to do with uh, the Justice League series in the sense of uh, the writing and stuff like that. Um, uh-huh. I would have to say that. Right there, um, it it was it influenced me to to want to to want to write well, to push me in that direction, um, mentor wise as well in the sense of uh, how talented uh, the writing is for uh, that series as well. Um, uh, as for people that are not famous, I would have to just say. Um, uh, my mother as well uh, mm-hmm. pushing me in that direction. Um, uh, she's like my number one fan. Um, so it goes to the conventions with me, uh, sits down and, uh, and, we, and and helps me in any way she can there as well. So, uh, um, of course, my, um, my sister and my brother as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, those, those are the... Uh, those are my supporters and uh, my influences. Mhm, mhm. And and the, you had mentioned earlier that the Justice League um, was really. I mean, when you started drawing, did you did you start drawing those characters? Because a lot of people start out, a lot of artists start out copying things that they see, and and grow from there. Um, were you influenced to the to the point where you you copied other people's works until you found your own kind of uh, your own voice? I'm, and I'm talking in terms of story and art. You know, your first stories. You said you were what in preteen when you did your first stories and they were science fiction stories. That's right, pretty young. Yeah, yeah that's pretty that. young. Um, and that was influenced a lot by Star Wars. Uh, you know. Star Wars is really big and everything. So with the series that I was doing, then the Star Girls, the police force was influenced a lot from Star Wars. I I didn't draw a lot of uh, stuff that was um, that I seen. I pretty much had an image of what I wanted to do with the character and stuff like that. So um, the, the character could have been similar, but more or less, I uh, would go ahead and create uh, my own character. I, I never did too much. Uh, uh, drawing off of somebody else's work. You even at that young age, you had your own vision, and and you were working on your own vision even that young. Yeah, that is, that's the only thing I can recall. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, um, I can remember some of the stuff that I might have implemented from what I've seen, but more or less character-wise, it was always uh, my own characters that I could uh, that I would create. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I remember having like something like a speeder bike in in there, so uh, it was more or less from Star Wars. But uh, yeah, just uh, most of the stuff is uh, um, some like I uh, would see something and watch something, and, and it would be maybe in comparison to it. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, my own character would be involved in it. I, I gotta say, man, you know, you started out young and you had a vision when you were young, and and look where you are today. Um, it 
it is it's remarkable and it's striking. You know, what you what you put together, you know, the artwork, the comic itself, it's very striking. And and the fact that you did it so young is is also a testament to your your persistence and, and what you were looking to do for yourself. Um, when when you look back at those earlier years um, and and you look at your own kids, do you see a commonality of you know maybe endeavor, artistic endeavor or intensity, or or are they are they just you know are they like you in that respect? You know, do you see kind of some of your personality in them? Yes, I do. I see my personality in them. Uh, I see like uh, oh, I watch my son play with his toys and um I could see myself in, in in him and what I used to do and everything. Um uh-huh. I could watch my daughter go off in her own world and I could see exactly how how I used to do that as well. So yes, I do see myself in them as well. And it it, it is amazing. <laughs> And and I mean, is that I mean, does that kind of inspire you too? Yes, it does. It does inspire me. Um, I, my dream is is pretty much uh to uh, of course become um successful and everything and um, hopefully retire. But when I do retire, to watch them uh, go ahead and take off from take over from where I was left off, that that would be a dream right there. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um, well, I we're we're here. Um, is there anything that uh that you need to mention <laughs> um, earlier or no, I'm you didn't say anything wrong. Or bad. Have we missed oh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm there. Hello. Is there anything? We're in the last two minutes. Perfect. Um, can you hear me? Because you're kind of breaking up. Hello. Hello. Uh, everybody says I'm breaking up. Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I, I was just asking: Was there anything you wanted to uh, to mention before we before we close out the show? Um, uh, yes, I would like to thank you for the opportunity of being on your show. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for even considering me. Um, I really uh, thanks a lot. I enjoyed the two hours you gave me. Thank you. Oh, no, the pleasure was entirely ours. And, you know, there's there's a good chance. I mean, you've got a lot of things coming up soon, and and we will probably have you on again. Um, so so keep us in mind. And also, like I said, keep, keep us up to date at BlackScienceFictionSociety.com website on your activities, your releases, you know, when the new book comes out and things like that, so that... Um, People can keep up with you and hopefully get you get you that 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 publicity push, that marketing push that uh, that sometimes tips people over into uh, you know out of obscurity and into the limelight. Um, so we're coming up on the last minute here. I want to thank you very much for being here. I want to remind people that BlackScienceFictionSociety.com is putting together its first. Um, 3D animated feature and uh, check out the website and hopefully maybe support the project. Um, the show is on every Friday. It uh, it starts at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Follow the clock around. And th- uh, to let people know that the podcast is usually available of the current show, usually within an hour after the show is done. So get your friends to check out the um, the podcast of this show and support the site and support the people. Uh, so, and and now we're going to turn this over to Jarvis if he comes back. 
uh, oh, there he is. Uh, Jarvis, why don't you go ahead and take us home? Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to make it really quick because I have to go to bed. I have class in the morning and a major test. But I want to thank everyone for participating. And this was a great uh, opportunity for everyone to get to know uh, Christian better and to see his mm-hmm. products. Um, and uh, thanks again for William for doing a great job. I'm just really grateful that so many people support what we're doing uh, and see the vision that we're putting forth. Um, I want to reiterate, uh, as William said, to please come on the site and fill out your uh, profile and share what you're doing uh, so that we can support you on that. And that goes for everybody in the in the chat room and everybody that hears this. Also, if you get an opportunity, if it's one dollar, five dollars, a thousand dollars, please donate to our film that we're working on. Uh, just look on the front of the website, and there's a big uh, advertisement for it right there. It's called Earth Squadron. And with that, I'm going to cut it short, and I may be in the chat room in about 10 minutes um, over on the main site. But thank you again for everyone's participation. It's, it's appreciated more than you know. And, Christian, thank you very much, Jarvis. And everybody, we will be back next week. Christian, hang on after the recording's over, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a couple things, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Right. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Thank you all. 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 Next week.